Welcome to the podcast. Today we have LTW, Lauren Taylor Wilson with us. Oh my gosh, thank you. Wait, when you were watching, have you watched And Just Like That? Oh yeah, the she's a new LTW. This is this is the original oh, LTW. Exactly. Yes. Like, let's get things right. Yes, let's get it straight, please. <laughs> Although she has a great wardrobe, so she I does. Mean, I would love to emulate her as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you are founder and CEO of Dora Ma. I want you to describe it because I want to get it right. Oh my gosh, it's a lot of things, but at the mm-hmm. core, it is a luxury fashion platform where you're able to shop these gorgeous closets of the most fashionable tastemakers, influencers, fashion collectors, anyone that has just a really cool point of view on fashion. And it gives you a place to not only shop things that they've worn before, but also things they're curating from some of their favorite brands. It's kind of like the ultimate style destination. So Love yeah, that's Dora Mar in a nutshell. The other thing that I love about it is the storytelling aspect mm. because it doesn't feel transactional. It doesn't feel like, I want a top, let me buy a top. It's like, you know, this person wore this top here. And it also gives like, you know, a bit of style inspiration. Maybe you've seen your influencer wear this dress at this event sort of thing. So I love that aspect of it. Do tell how it came to be. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you so much. Storytelling is super important to us. We're always like people before product because that's the fun part about fashion. Like where someone wore something and, you know, I bought the Chanel jacket, one of my first jackets or purchases from Dora Mar and it was from a muse who used to wear that jacket in meetings with Anna Wintour and Victoria Beckham. stop. So it's like that becomes not just a Chanel jacket now, it becomes like a power fashion jacket and I wear it for, you know, a lot of big meetings. So the storytelling is really fun and really exciting. Mm -hmm. Um, But it didn't start Glamorous. Dormar was not a glamorous start by any means. And I don't think any startup oh, usually yeah. is. Mm-hmm. I had worked in fashion, luxury fashion, for about 10 years in New York City and um, for really cool companies like Ralph Lauren and Christie's and Gucci. And I was at Mode Operandi before I had the idea for Dormar. And like, I didn't necessarily think about leaving those cushy places. I mean, mm-hmm. like, we were just saying Moda has amazing, you know, amazing items. And it was so yeah. fun to work for Lauren Santa Domingo, the founder there. So I wasn't like Shout trying. Shout out LSD. Oh, my gosh. Another another three three letter um, acronym. Person. Exactly. <laughs> oh my gosh. Exactly. It's a trend. Okay. We're we're trending. I know. Gosh, do I need to be one now? We'll, we'll but, come up with one. But mine is C A T. It's cat, which is like it's a All bit. Right, you well, know, it's not the same. We'll we'll work on it. We'll work on it another time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll we're there. gonna have to come up with a better middle name so that you know it like sounds a bit catchier. You know? Exactly. Change the birth certificates and everything. <laughs> exactly. Oh my gosh. Um, but I had the idea because I I, I think you know. Naming all those amazing places I worked, the story of Dormar actually really makes sense. This idea of storytelling and provenance and um, what someone wearing something that inspires you means to a luxury customer. Um, but I really got the idea at random. I was like scrolling through Instagram, like having the Sunday scaries. And oh, yeah. a celebrity stylist friend of mine uh, was selling her closet on her Instagram. And she was styling everything on mm-hmm. herself and kind of told why she loved it. And I thought that was a really fun way to shop because I love – the kind of unexpected pairing she had. I would have never paired those green pants with that top, but now here I am DMing her saying, I want to buy that off you. And then it just kind of pinged, like what if there was a cool place where all these super fashionable women told the stories of their wardrobe and let you shop them? And so I called my parents. I'm like, I'm starting a business. They're like, okay, goodbye. <laughs> and Wish you well. Yeah, wish Enjoy. you well. <laughs> and then here we are like four years later having, having you know, continued to build that business. Mm-hmm. What was what was your parents' reaction to you being like, okay, I'm about to quit these cu- cushy jobs in luxury fashion and I'm going out on my own? Oh my gosh. Well, I think when I first told them, I'm a very like big ideas person. So mm-hmm. I threw a lot of ideas out. And I think after I started doing a lot of research on the space and because uh, Dormar really started as just kind of resale focus, and we've kind of expanded beyond that now, just how big the resale market is, how big this idea of content creators and that sort of thing. And I just saw all this opportunity. So I kept presenting the facts to my parents. Um, and then nine months later, I left because it came to a head where it's like, if I was really going to do Dormar to the extent I knew it could be, yeah. I couldn't work full time at at um, yeah. Moda. So um, made the decision six months before COVID to oh, to leave gosh, Moda yeah. mm-hmm. um, with an idea and like a hope and a prayer and a few friends that were willing to be some of our first muses, which is what we call the women who sell their clothes on Dormar. Mm-hmm. Um, and then a team built from there. But um, it's definitely one of those things that 
I don't know if you can think through too hard because it's so scary oh, and yeah. so insurmountable in a way. And it's and it's almost like, okay, how do I make this really, really big thing down to like a to-do list of what can I achieve now and like little stepping stones on the way. Hopefully it gets to what I want it to be kind of thing. Totally. But exactly. It's a hope and a prayer. It's a hope and a prayer. <laughs> and it's really awkward too when like you've just quit your like really cool job and everyone's like, exactly. so what are you up to, Lauren? And you're like, yeah, I'm starting a business. And they're like, okay, what? Like, you know, those people that just are kind of naysayers and are like, what is she? Like, that's kind of, mm-hmm. a, you know, a really big thing to take on with, you know, no funding behind it, no yeah. team, just just a belief that like this should exist. Yeah. Well, you've done and it all does. right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. The name. Mm. Why did you choose it? I have a bit of an idea, but I love how it all sort of comes together. So naming the business was I, no joke took six months like I, and it almost made me want to quit because I was like listen this is it's so the hard LTW of it it's, all. It's, it's, it's got to be catchy it's got to be catchy <laughs> and like I didn't want it to be something like technology sounding or like you know too like fashion-y sounding like you know okay, like a yeah. stylista whatever I, I don't even know what that is but mm-hmm. I, I wanted something that made you want to dig more and made you a bit curious okay um and so a bit of a mystery exactly so mm-hmm. our um uh a guy on our strategy team who like never really attended the like branding marketing meeting so Love much <laughs> we're like can you just show up because we have yeah. no idea what to name this business like we are running around in circles mm-hmm. and um he was like what about dora mar and i was like wow that really fits Mm -hmm. obviously her background as is best known as picasso's muse but i think that's um a shame because she's also an incredible artist and photographer in the surrealism age in her own right and she's Mm -hmm. finally like you know post-mortem getting the um, attention she deserves from major art institutions especially in europe so she kind of reclaims that word muse okay um and obviously you know we call all of our um women on our platform muses and so i really liked that story and i also really liked the double a in mar i thought that was just beautifully yeah beautifully when it was it was aesthetically pleasing so Mm -hmm. i saw the branding in my head and what have been the like the biggest challenges also like six months before covid yeah oh my gosh i feel like there's too many challenges to like <laughs> list off yeah i think one of the biggest things for me that i mean still to this day i fight it every single day is mm-hmm. like when you put yourself out there to start a business it's so vulnerable and so the nose feel Personal. like heart-wrenching yeah. and you want to like give it all up and be like no one believes in me mm-hmm. and so i've really had to learn to not that not let that affect me personally and not let that kind of build an imposter syndrome because it does feel like should I even be here what am I worth and so I think constantly challenging yourself when things don't go how you wanted them to go Mm -hmm. um, is is and always will be I think the biggest challenge for me and um you know, also just making sure the team is is feeling like they're valued at Dormar. That's something that always You have a great team though. I do have a great team. And they've been with you for a long time. Everyone has, yeah. Which is like that's an amazing accomplishment, especially in the world of startups. You know, the 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 turnaround is quite it can is usually quite high. <laughs> so good for you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. I feel like we all really believe in what this can be yeah. and so we're excited about it and we like each other and we're supportive mm-hmm. of each other and it's it is really cool so i feel really grateful for them so like you said it sort of started out resale focused mm-hmm. and then now you're also working direct with brands a how do you choose the brands how does it work sort of like fostering those relationships tell me Oh my gosh. Well, I think it, it literally begins and ends with the muses. Like the muses ah. are kind of the guiding light of Dormar. So we're just like pulling them all together in one place. Mm-hmm. So we use the muses a lot of like, what brands are you guys loving? That's okay. how we find a lot of brands that maybe we didn't mm-hmm. know. Or, you know, let's say, you know, one of our um, brands is Markarian, which a lot of our muses love. Yes. Um, so we saw our muses, you know, wearing their own Markarian, then kind of putting it into their Dormar closet. And so we're like, well, Markarian just has to get involved directly. Um, because this is a great opportunity. And I think I love resale for so many reasons. I love unique pieces. I'm a vintage fiend. I like wearing things no one else has. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's size limiting. Yes. Um, so there's a lot of customers that will go to our muses and be like, I love your style, but like I'm literally not your size. Yeah. So how do we make the closets a bit more accessible? Uh-huh. And so that's kind I of like that. Yeah. So that's why we lay it on the brand aspects. So you're still able to like access that sense of style from your favorite muse without feeling like, all right, I'm never gonna be a size zero. Who are your dream muses? Oh my gosh. 
Okay, well. Give me top three, please. Okay, so we can't, I mean, we talked about LSD already, but she yeah. will forever and always be just so, so chic to me. Oh, my God. So chic. Yeah. I am also like a 70s fiend. Like I love the style of the 70s. Okay. Like that is – I mean for my 10-year anniversary in New York, I did a disco party last summer. Like It was great. <laughs> Studio 54 there. themed. See, exactly. I had a wonderful time. It's literally, I love the 70s. So mm-hmm. if I could raid like Bianca Jagger or Pat uh. Cleveland's closet – I actually read Pat Cleveland. All of her Halston got stolen at some point, which was tr- – like – don't quote me on that, but yeah. I'm pretty sure I read that because I was doing a lot of research yeah. oh my for God. my look for that party. Um, so I guess it, I don't know whose closet it's in now, but yeah. um, I just love the movement that those women brought to style, the like freedom. It always looked so elevated and elegant and tasteful, but mm-hmm. but fun. And I think that's such a hard balance to strike. You don't want to look so stuffy that you can't move, but you don't yeah. want to look so um, – casual that it's like okay what what does that look so i love the balance of the 70s the elegance and and the frivolity of it all so you're also a big vintage fan Mm. what is something that is like top of your vintage wish list that's like hopefully at one point i will be able to find this item oh my god i would love okay so this is like way way back like a madame gray dress like those are wait what is this Oh my gosh! It's so in the in the twenties. It's like mm-hmm. you know the, the kind of Roman pleated gowns that are like so intricate. Ooh. Aliyah was inspired by them a lot. Okay, so yes, I think Aliyah yes. now has um, a, a big um, exhibition of his collection because he was a huge vintage collector in Paris right now, and he has a lot of her things. Ooh. And they are very rare to find. I need to look into them. Yeah, they're very expensive, very rare, very kind of old Hollywoody, but in like a more you know, Grecian way, if you will. Ooh, yeah. um, like a lot of fashion photography in the 30s and 40s had her pieces. Um, so if I could find like a cream ivory Madame mm-hmm. Grey dress, I would I would die. G-R-E-S, Madame Grease. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I also feel as though more now than I remember, vintage is so popular at the mm-hmm. moment. And mm-hmm. so I feel as though people are sort of like turning to – Exactly. What can I have that less people have and that, you know, is rare and whatever, or maybe the nostalgia aspect. And I saw this in this TV show growing up and now I have the chance. And so I think it's been interesting to sort of see that feed more and more into social media, which Mm -hmm. is where we see the hot new and, you know, what's trendy and all of that. And seeing these like, you know, vintage pieces. Uh, This morning I even saw you know the newspaper Galliano dress that Carrie wore in Sex yes, in the City? Yes. It's on first dibs for forty-seven thousand oh dollars. <laughs> first dibs is crazy. First but, dibs yeah. is actually I mean unhinged. I just moved apartments and so I've been looking at furniture. Furniture and I'm like, okay, this is as much as my rent, so we're gonna yeah. <laughs> Listen, and that's without the shipping. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So we don't even we look for inspo though. We look for great inspo. <laughs> you know, before I moved yeah. I was like oh my gosh yeah you know I want this sort of maybe like you know Louis the 14th inspired something or other and there I was tip tapping on first dips yeah. and I was like maybe not for this you know $74,000 couch <laughs> <laughs> it's like we love it though it's beautiful oh I mean like, yeah exactly my when, eyes are satiated when Dormar exits I'm going to first dips <laughs> Be, be ready, guys. My God. Yeah, yeah. But, and then you look at some stuff and you're like, you know, oh my gosh, this crazy price. And then it'll be like sold. And you're no. like, good for them, though. Oh, good for them. And truly. I need to find those muses who are decorating their homes with these things. There we go. There it is. Also, I saw something that one of those pieces, this is something that like I fixated on as a teenager, which was Alexander McQueen. Um, Plato's Atlantis, the armadillo shoes. Mm, I remember yes. thinking that this was some like mythical creature creation. Like this was weird and wonderful at its greatest. And it was very Lady Gaga and I'm a little monster. <laughs> but um, I think 10 were produced. And I think Lady Gaga has maybe one or two pairs and four are owned by this like fabulous French woman. Yeah. And I'm like... But- and the rest are probably at the Met. This is it. Exactly. Exactly. And I'm like, well, you know, my dreams are dashed. That's never going to happen. Um, And I hope that exactly the Met at least has them on show so that I can go and, you know, visit my dreams. And look at your babies. Look at your babies and how much they've grown up. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) 
But it's like those pieces that really like capture something. Yeah, yeah. And it's so personal to every person. It right? is. It is. I remember being 21 years old in the city at the McQueen exhibition, seeing those shoes. I mean, that exhibition that, was, was... That, I cried. That made me... So I had a little blip in my career where I was um, at NYU getting a master's in costume studies. I thought I wanted to be a curator for somewhere like the Costume Institute. Wow. So in that exhibition really kind of spurred like, okay, there's a whole fashion academia beyond the industry yeah. that is really interesting to me. I ended up just being young. I mm. like the fast pacedness of working at a business right now. Museum work is incredibly technical mm -hmm. um, and arduous in a lot of ways. And I was like, okay, how do we get to the next thing? Yeah. Um, but I don't know. Maybe maybe after the craziness of Dora Mar, that, that would make sense to I return know. to. Wait, but, that's really interesting. Yeah. Tell me more about that. Yeah, it was really cool. I mean, it was 12 people in my class. It's a two-year program. You know, I think when you say costume studies, people are like, oh, you're designing theater. Yeah. Costume is just like the academic term for fashion. Mm -hmm. um, so it was people like me who wanted the history part. It was people that wanted to potentially go into theater or film or that sort of thing. Uh, but really studying like the anthropological study of fashion like from roman age yeah. like through basically the 20th century mm -hmm. and um how dress says something about society how it says something about gender roles or mm -hmm. different races or ethnicities i mean it's it was it was a passion a, a passion project that i was able to you know do which i'm so grateful for and yeah. it was uh it, but now it's coming full circle right like now i'm working you know starting a company that's all about what is the story behind you know what we're taking in how mm -hmm. do we how do we bring that to fruition and kind of show that fashion isn't something that's disposable and just go down to the street and buy a bunch of stuff and then do a, a yes. haul on tiktok like yeah. there there is a lot of meaning in the things that we mm -hmm. buy and then decide to wear so yeah um hopefully dormar kind of brings that into light in a way definitely the list index <laughs> so quarterly List uh, releases a report on the hottest brands of the quarter and also the hottest products. So, and then what goes into this is like search data, um, natterings on social media, like how much things are mentioned, blah, blah, blah. Oh, and also sales. But sometimes some things will go on there and you're like, no one is buying this, you know, but we're all just laughing about it basically on social mm. media. But so I wanted to get your thoughts on the top three top brands and the top three top products. Okay. So the top three brands of this quarter are Miu Miu, number two is Loewe, number three is Prada. Clearly, Muchia Prada is having a moment. Yeah. Okay. So Miu Miu, the return of the ballet flat, right? I mean, honestly, I'm happy for the return of the ballet flat. So that's kind of fun. I think probably Miu Miu is chattering a lot because didn't have that moment earlier this year with um, Nicole Kidman and that little mini, okay. the schoolgirl yes, moment. So, so that was, if you can believe it, last year? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Time goes far too fast to yeah. fashion all yeah. of this. But I feel as though that collection really kicked things off because yeah. it was the controversy of it all. It was exactly the shortest of short skirts. Yeah. That Miu Miu set that was like everywhere. It looked yeah. like they were just loaning the same one left, right and center. <laughs> Hope it fits you. Yeah, yeah exactly. Hope for the best. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, and we were seeing it so much and everything and we're like, wait, this, this tiny skirt that I would get arrested for public indecency in is, you know, having a moment. How? It was like Sisterhood you... of the Traveling Indecent Skirt. It was Sisterhood of the Traveling Indecent Skirt. I love that. But exactly. Yeah, there yeah. was somebody even created an Instagram account that was solely dedicated to this Mew Mew set oh and God. where it okay, ended up. You'll send that to me. I will do. But yeah, so I feel like that sort of sparked everybody's sort of interest yeah, again. Yeah. And they have been riding that wave all the way to the bank. They have. I do think that the paradigm of fashion that we're in right now is like talkability and engagement and how many yes, people talk about it yeah. makes a hot product versus like what is a quality product. Yes, I think very, that's, very true. That's the, that's the issue with fashion right now. Mm -hmm. And I, maybe it's not an issue, but it's just the reality of, of the world that we live in. And I run a brand, so I understand it. These people mm -hmm. are running brands. You have to get those clicks and engagement, but you can't lose – that core client that wants a quality item exactly um, in a lot of ways but you know uh, it's a, it's a, it's a different world no uh, no i completely understand and also it's it then becomes a balance for the customer mm -hmm. of like not sort of giving in to the hype because it's all talk and because it's all hype, but also is this an item that I actually want and will get a lot of use out of or am i just going to buy it take an instagram picture in it and be like Oh, well, you know, that's kind of over now. Right, so Miu Miu's number one. Prada's number three. 
I mean, the Mimi and Prada are kind of like I mean, within this. It's like Mimi's uh, the younger sister, exactly. right? Exactly. Which used to reflect in the pricing. <laughs> not so much <laughs> now. I was going to say, I when I was like, oh my gosh, I must have been like 18 or 19. My mm-hmm. little brother is like the sweetest. Like he is single ladies and he's so sweet because he buys me the nicest Christmas gifts. Oh. And so he was like 15. I really wanted these purple suede Mew Mew pumps. Stop. And like my mom, my parents were like, oh, we're not feeding yeah, into this yeah. obsession but now look what this obsession has caught me <laughs> but my brother like took all of his like whatever like teenage work he did to buy those um purple pumps for me and they were like my first like grown-up designer heel and so Mimi always says hold a special place in Wait. my mind I still have the purple they're so beat up because I wore them in college to frat parties you can't, like you can't get boo, them. boo me but yeah. <laughs> I, I have them still because they're just so sweet and special so I actually always will have a special place in Mimi even you know skirt and all Wait. Is that sweet? Why is your brother the sweetest I guy? I know. He's single. He's so cute. Oh, my gosh. We love him. Stop. He'll Stop. buy you great Whoever, gifts. Whoever, this is the thing. <laughs> Whoever ends up with him is winning the jackpot because, I, my gosh. I know. When he was, like, 10, he bought me that little um, Tiffany, you know, that silver uh, bracelet, it, the heart bracelet. He took his, like, pound of quarters that, like, you know, your parents would be like, you can have the quarters. I'm and cry. went to Tiffany and was like, I want to get this for my sister. He's the sweetest. I know. We love him. I know. Loewe number two. I mean, that puzzle bag won't die, y'all. <laughs> Wait, but you know that they're trying to kill it. It's actually becoming a bit of mixed information at the moment because they basically said that they were going to discontinue the original puzzle bag and only sell the puzzle edge, which is sort of like... You know how the puzzle bag has gaps in between? Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It doesn't have any of the gaps. Yeah. All of them, like, sort of fold over each yeah. other. And people were going in, and their sales associates were saying, like, yeah, this is going to be discontinued. And they're actually, a subscriber of mine sort of commented on a uh, Loewe post to do with the puzzle bag or whatever, being like, you know, shame that this is being discontinued. And they were like, oh, we're not discontinuing it. So I have no idea what's going jury, on. Jury is out. See, it bags are tough for brands, right? Because they become mm-hmm. ubiquitous and kind of like, yes. oh, overshadowed by that and a little overexposed Mm -hmm. but that's where a brand makes their money so that's like that's like always a a tough choice Mm -hmm. for a brand yeah but no the web is beautiful i mean i think beyond their bags like their leathers or textiles or fabrications like they're rich i think what they're doing very well is this sort of marriage of the novelty and the art aspect Mm -hmm. of fashion and the pushing the boundaries of what can we create with what fabrics and the commercial side. Yeah. And I think J.W. Anderson is doing a brilliant job. We we love him. Oh, my God. Yeah. But no, I think Loewe is great. I think it's actually by Heritage a Spanish brand, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, actually, I need to do a little bit more research on the background of Loewe. I don't know enough about it. It's like I yeah. love knowing where it started. Like, okay, yeah. From the this ver- goes like, back to your from to your the very beginning. Design, uh, yeah. yeah, back, back to the costume yeah. studies. Yeah. yeah, I love seeing where a brand was mm-hmm. and then you know where it is today and trying to find that through line. Wait, so tell me, what is a brand that you love there? story. Okay, well, I wrote my thesis mm-hmm. at NYU about the usage of the black model at Givenchy Ooh. from Hubert, the founder, yes. through to so this was when Ricardo Tucci was still there. Yeah. Because I felt like I loved that era of Givenchy. Yeah, exactly, but I felt like it was weird, right? Cuz Hubert de Givenchy was all about Audrey Hepburn. We know yes. the breakfast at Tiffany's, the little black dress, like he I mean, Audrey was his muse. Yeah. Very very obviously gamin, you know, Old Hollywood, whatever. And then Ricardo Tisci was dressing like Kanye and Mm Jay-Z and Kim Kardashian and Beyonce and all into the music and the hip-hop scene. Yeah. Which was great. But I was Mm -hmm. like, that is, you know, is there any like grounding in what, you know, the foundings Uh of Hubert? I I just kind of thought that's an interesting Mm -hmm. play for Givenchy to go there. Is there any grounding in the foundation of the house? So I did some research. And um, the Battle of Versailles was a huge moment in fashion. It was when five French designers and five American designers did a show at Versailles in the 70s. Okay. So it was like Anne Klein and, and Bill Blass and Oscar mm-hmm. Laurenta and Halston on the Americans. And then it was like Givenchy and Dior and such on the French side. And the French side showed like very, very stuck up couture stuffy things. This was in the <laughs> 70s. And then you had the Americans and Stephen Burroughs was a black designer that – um, was was showing as well. And you had the Americans with like Pat Cleveland and the disco era people and women and women of color moving and shaking and discoing down the runway. And Hubert was quoted as saying like, these black models are so fun. I love their movement. I love their energy, which now maybe is like not the best thing to say. But <laughs> um, 
but he actually in the 70s had this cabine Mm -hmm. is what it was called of black models that he used almost exclusively for a lot of his runway shows Mm -hmm. and campaigns and I had the honor of meeting some of them one of them that I met was Sandy Bass and so there really is this kind of grounding in the founding of Givenchy for this representation of the black woman and all her beauty Mm -hmm. and it carried through you know in the way that Ricardo interpreted it and now I kind of want to go back because you know when Claire White Keller was there and dressed Meghan Markle for the royal wedding Mm -hmm. and and Givenchy I think that there's this really interesting study there and so back to Loewe I would love to understand you know what are those inklings of the heritage of the house that's not maybe totally out right there yes that's so obvious but yeah Yeah. exactly so that's kind of my favorite thing that's my nerdy those are my nerdy tendencies I'm really (laughs) no no but I'm like learning a lot I I didn't know any of this this is so interesting watch the documentary there's a Battle of Versailles documentary Robin Gavon who's a Washington Post fashion critic wrote a, a wonderful book on it moving into the top products of the quarter yes so the top product at the moment are the Maison Margiela tabbies. Oh, tabbies. Mm-hmm. We have a really cool collection of not not the Mary Janes, but mm-hmm. of the original the original tabbies, like mm-hmm. really cool ones. The boots? The boots. Uh-huh. The boots. We have a couple cool muses, like Ariana Avram is a collector of, of the tabbies, and she has, and now it's like dwindled because people have bought it, but she oh, had a really yeah. cool collection. Yeah. And I personally probably wouldn't do They're it. They're not for everybody. They're not for Like shots when people do it with like, and it's holding something. The no, toes please. are holding. Okay, I hate that. I honestly, I don't like feet and toes. I, I hate that actually. <laughs> I might change my opinion if I'm I see so sorry. That. No, I hate that. But they do it like anyway. I won't. Oh my God. I won't dwell so as not to so as not to trick you. <laughs> but number two is a grey cashmere Miu Miu cardigan that just has tiny little Miu Miu. On the left, le- on the left breast. Kathy does not like. <laughs> here's here's my beef, right? Which is number two means that I mean, come on, this is a very popular product. And the thing is, is that I I doubted it. I went on and I did a bit of a Google. They are right. It is sold out. And to me, this is shocking. What's the retail price? One thousand three hundred and fifty three dollars. For a cashmere grey cardigan. For a cashmere grey cardigan that has the tiniest little embroidered logo. with Mimi. Okay. Go to Nadam. Like, like, go to... Th- th- and then get your sewing machine out. <laughs> exactly, right? You Do your monogram. LTW. Love. Thank you. Fabulous. Exactly, right? You could, you could take it up a notch. Yeah. There are a slew of cashmere companies that do the exact... There is nothing about this cardigan that, like, the cut is interesting or the way that this is that and or the button. No. It is a great cardigan. This is why Mimi is a top brand now. You, you slap on the Mimi. And all of a sudden... There you go. That's all it takes. I mean, takes. that's brand strength of a name. That's yes. good for them. It's a quiet luxury thing, though. Yeah. It's a quiet luxury thing. Yes. Which... It's also the recession core. People exactly. want to invest in the classics. Exactly. But again, like you said, I think there's a lot of other places to find great cashmere. And mm-hmm. here's the thing with that sweater. In a season or two, you're going to be like, I don't want to associate with that on my sweater. But also, with a cashmere sweater... Moths. Yeah. You're paying one thousand three hundred and fifty three dollars. Totally. It's not gonna it, it's tough to hold. And the moths might be at it in a season. The moths and you've are got at nothing it. of that left. No, nope. you only have the Mimi embroidery, maybe. <laughs> stick exactly. it on another <laughs> then you go to old navy and stick it on. Because <laughs> you've gone broke with the card again. <laughs> <laughs> but exactly. So that one that one I have beef with. I don't have as much beef. Yeah. I'm particularly passionate. But it's, in- it's interesting that that's a top product. Like Exactly. It's it's, it's like to make it number two. Because actually one and two, because the tabby isn't necessarily pretty either. And it's not like loud in the, if you're a fashion person, you know a yeah. tabby. But if you're, you know. It's not flashy know, or anything. No, it's not. Yeah. You're just like, oh, it's an interesting shoe. What's Otherwise, three? What's the third product? Three is the Cos Quilted Oh, bag. right. We were looking at that. Yeah. I mean, which that's... is. But do you want to know what's interesting? I don't know if it was the qu- last quarter or the quarter before. There was a Uniqlo like crossbody sort of moon mm. bag, which again, that one I think went viral on TikTok and that's what spurred it. Yeah. Because obviously it's such an approachable price point, blah, blah, blah. And I assume something similar happened. I mean, I sort of get it. It's like very sort of. I mean, how expensive is that? 
You, $99. There we go. It's wearable and it's affordable. And the shape of it is very sort of Prada nylon. Yes. yes. So it's that actually, hold on a second. But okay, this actually fits with the first two because it's actually a very usable thing, right? Hold, hold on. We've got a spanner in the works here. This thing is massive. That's the one that's number three. What this the is the heck? one that's number three. Big bag energy. <laughs> I think I could fit in there. I'm 5'2". I, I was literally about to say. Can you imagine if I toted that around the city? There. I would look like a freak. <laughs> It would be at your ankles. That would be. <laughs> what is someone putting in there? That reminds me. What's that? The succession line. The capacious. <laughs> it is a ludicrously <laughs> capacious bag. Exactly. It is. Exactly. <laughs> what is God, this actually the top the lunch pail. The, the top three are like disinformed by succession. Essentially. I, wait, did you watch it? Yeah, love. I'm obsessed with it. I'm sad it's it's done. I'm so sad, but the last episode was actually incredible. There are so the- few series that end. That in, well. a, in a exactly, it's usually like such a cop out, and you're like, yeah. that, I wasted five years of my life yeah. on this show. No, and the acting. I think about Kendall every day. <laughs> I, I think about all of them. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. Okay, so I want to take us into our last segment, which is the wheel of nosiness. Oh yes. Okay. Let's let's get nosy. So I am going to bring up my little wheel of fortune, as it were, that is pre-populated with fashiony questions you'll press the center button okay. and it will spit one out to okay, you okay oh my gosh okay. i'm nervous oh it literally spins i know what's next on your wish list okay i actually know because i i saw this the other day so it's a new to add to the wish list Ooh. actually on capacious bags it's a capacious <laughs> bag but how, i need how big is it in proportion to you <laughs> like yeah exactly that's like the barometer right it's just okay i don't actually know the name of the bag itself but it's a kate bag and it's this chocolate brown suede is it is it sort of like quote unquote jody-esque yes yeah yes. and it's sort of like a hammocky yes yeah yes Ooh. i just think that is so luxe for toting around the city i i tend to i love evening wear like i'm obsessed with evening wear I will like splurge on evening wear, splurge on the shoes, mm-hmm. splurge on the accessories. Like I love that special moment. And I tend to then like say, what the fuck do I wear? Excuse me. Can I say that? <laughs> yeah, that's fine. <laughs> what the heck do I wear like day to day? Yeah, I kind of forget. Like day wear is just so – it's it's lovely, but it's just kind of – that's it. It's not where your heart lies. It's not where my heart lies. Mm-hmm. So I tend to need to like, you know, have those staple pieces for day wear that I feel like – are elevated and special and luxe looking Mm -hmm. and I'm having a chocolate brown moment. I think a lot of people are, but I just think it's a lovely alternative. Yeah, the suede is super rich. Yeah, it's decadent. It's very decadent. Mm -hmm. So I imagine it in my new Brooklyn neighborhood strolling around with the coffee, leaves are changing. Yeah. So that's 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 new on the wish list. I love that. And I've tested it. Mm Mm-hmm. It fits proportionally. Nice. We're not overpowered. Okay, good. We can fit a laptop because Really? You can, yeah. The, oh the size gosh. I had. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. It will stick in there. Oh, nice. Because I need to carry it around the laptop. I mean, yeah. it's, it's not chic, but <laughs> look, we're a working woman. Yeah. <laughs> gotta do what you gotta do. Exactly. Okay, my next my next wheel of fortune. Yes. Ooh, styling tip you swear by. Ooh, what do I swear by? I don't know if this is styling, but this is just mm-hmm. a fashion hack. Like, find a good tailor. Like, I – and this goes to evening wear. This goes to pants. Like, I'll buy something off the rack and – Either I'm so short it doesn't fit, so it needs to be tailored, Mm -hmm. or I'm just like, you know what? I wish the shoulder was a bit more up here or the waist hit more here, and it changes the entire look of what you're wearing. Uh, Proportions. Proportions. That's my styling hack. Mm -hmm. Like, be so aware of your proportions and the way clothes. They send everything oh, amazing. to me. Oh my gosh, it's fantastic. So I go downstairs wow. and I'm like, you know, I need this doing. Can that, you help me? And they're like, yeah. That is, I, mean, uh, I might be moving to your building. Let, let me tell <laughs> you, I cannot move out now. Yeah. Like, like there is nowhere else. Because <laughs> it's kind of a schlep, to be honest. Like, yeah. And I have certain tailors I'll let do certain things. Yes. And so, okay. And I so haven't let like, go of them. So like I lived downtown for 10 years. So like mm-hmm. I kept my West Village person, but I then found like an East Village person for some things. Now I'm in Brooklyn. I'm completely turned around. Yeah. Um, so that is like a great. Yeah. But my my big one has been jeans. 
jeans. Yes. Yeah, because yes. I tend to be wider hips, mm. small waist. Yeah. So there's always that gap. Yeah. Um, so I've been getting a lot of trousers done. But the other thing that he's managed to do is there was a pair of a Goldie jeans that they're actually called the low slung baggy. Yeah. I don't like low rise. Yeah. Who do, who who seriously like who does? There's a very small percentage of yeah. people that's that's rocking and loving in, a low rise. When she was 25. <laughs> <laughs> if you just take in the waist, you can make it high rise. Yeah. And I've just been doing that. That's, been that's a great styling hack. It's so good. Yeah. 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 Because I'm like, I love it otherwise. I just wish it would sit here. Brilliant. Well, here's another vintage hack. Mm-hmm. Like whenever I go to any of these like vintage fairs or vendors, whatever, find mm-hmm. something you love, I actually don't pay attention to size because either it can be taken in yeah. or it can be taken out. Maybe this is a short person thing, but since I have to hem everything at the bottom, ah, there's always extra a little bit of something to yes. like put in. Because vintage, I don't have a small waist, and vintage stuff is like, yeah. But I love it, and you're not going to find it again. Mm-hmm. So I actually, I will always make it work. So if you find a good tailor, yeah. you can like make the impossible possible. Yeah, that's, that's a great that's one. A hack. Okay. Well, I've accidentally pressed it for you, so you can press again, or you okay. can accept this. Okay, one. I'm going to accept yours. Fashion item that you want to see burn. It's so funny. One of our muses, Eleanor Leftwich, just did this uh, like AMA with that question. Oh, really? And it was so funny seeing what people did. Um, sunglasses inside at clubs and bars. What's going on with that? How? I, what is going on with that? Look, because even with 2020 vision, thank you, LASIK, <laughs> I – I'm not seeing anything. I couldn't see my hand I, in front I, of my face if I'm wearing sunglasses in a club. It's already dark. I'm I, already I having understand. to like sort of squint to turn into some sort of, you know, other creature so that I can see. Have they just – like I don't – it doesn't make sense to me. No, That's another thing I, that I'm I would like, be feeling against the wall. Yeah. What is going on? That trend can also die for me. Yeah, agreed. And, and also low, low-rise jeans. That's not flattering on anybody. So I think that can also go away. Because, you know, I'm here with a high-rise trouser. I like, I like the fact. <laughs> exactly. I like the fact that, guess what? We move it we, over. We move it We o- move it up. <laughs> Thank you very much. Exactly. For, for those YouTube viewers, you see what this I mean? But, the millennial special, that's why. <laughs> the millennial special, I love it. But exactly. It's like a low rise. I would just be, no, everything would be cutting everything, in. Everything's cutting out, cutting in. Yeah, no. It's, it's, I probably, now after you ask this question, yeah. we get off this filming, I'll yeah. be like, shoot, I have a billion others. <laughs> Um, because there, there definitely is. Let's do one more. Okay. Because I feel as though I stole that one. Oh I my gosh, because I didn't spin the wheel. Okay. Yeah. Two fashion brands you were bored of. Okay. <laughs> one, and I hate saying this because she's one of only, one of the only female designers at an LVMH brand, but I'm a little, I'm a little oversaturated on Dior right now. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. A little oversaturated. And maybe it's the, the Jay Adore, like... Oh, little yeah. mm-hmm. uh, pointed things, pointed things, the pointed <laughs> shoes. <laughs> the pointed things uh, like that hang off the feet. The, the, the tutu skirt with yeah. the brief underneath. I just like, Dior's in a, a fantastic house and there's yeah. so many beautiful pieces she does. But to me, I'm not drawn to that house right yeah. now. I don't know if it's a little overexposed or a little yeah. social media drenched. But this is the thing as well. We go in phases with brands, yeah. right? So sometimes I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm obsessed with this. And the last few seasons have been killing it. And then they do a season when you're like, that's well, not really me. I'm not yeah. that interested. Well, I mean, so it, been, it comes and goes. It might have been um, not this past collection, but the collection I think before that that she did. And it was like very kind of like mod 60s and it was really short. Yes. I wasn't sure about that one. I think I kind of like wobbled there and I was like, mm-hmm. I don't know how how excited I am about that right now. Mm-hmm. Not saying there aren't beautiful things. No, yeah. And a Lady Dior bag is so beautiful and elegant and classic. Mm-hmm. Um, another brand that I'm bored of. Okay. So I used to work at Gucci. Mm-hmm. I hope I well, I mean, I know it's going through a transition, so I don't want to blame mm-hmm. them. That yeah. collection was boring. I mean, the funniest things were like what, the Gucci one. by Zara or whatever it was. Like so those are some of the comments. Stop. That's actually and, and it was like funny. that's actually kind <laughs> kind of funny. But like, let's give him his footing. I was a little tired yes. of the Alessandro Michel look personally. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like, I I respect his genius. Yes, I respect what he did for the house. Incredible, incredible, mm-hmm. incredible. I didn't need to see another like Randy Chic moment. Mm-hmm. Um, I I get it, but look, let's let him find his exactly. Let him find his way. We'll give, sometimes we'll, we'll give him chances. We'll give him chances. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, it's it's gonna take more than a season. Who are you bored of? I'm actually interested. Oh, who am I bored of? Okay, so this is one that I was bored and then I wasn't, and now I am again. Okay, Bally. Interesting. So I was – I would never look at Bali. Yeah. And then with Ruigi, yeah. I was like, hold on a second. Yeah. 
And now he's gone. I looked at the new collection. And I was like, and I'm out. Yeah, that's a brand that's going to have a hard time, like, recapturing mo- any little exactly. momentum that, like, they barely caught on to. Yeah. That's a good question. I like that one. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you for being here. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. We could, like, chat oh, I know. for hours about who we're bored of, who we love. It's so fun. Please take a moment to plug yourself. Plug Dora Ma. Oh, Tell my us everything. Gosh. How can everybody find you? Oh, my gosh. We, you can find me on all channels, but find Dora Mar first. So on Instagram, <laughs> we're Shop Dora Mar. Don't forget the two A's in Mar. Very important. Mm-hmm. And then my personal Instagram is a mouthful. It's Lauren Taylor Wilson. And sometimes I'll, I'll post fun hacks. Yeah. Fun fashion things. I think we need to start the hashtag. Oh, I also started TikTok. <gasps> Throw it out I think there. It, oh, no, I th- oh, it's, Lauren, I, it's Lauren Taylor Wilson. Okay. I, I aligned them. But we do a lot of fashion history chats on I there. love that. Or like, you know, yeah. videos. Mm-hmm. Um, and we dig into like who people's – like famous people's muses are, which is fun. I love mm-hmm. pulling out the archival photos. So if you're into that – Give me a follow. I'm new. I'm new on the TikTok channel. Okay. Subscribe if you're on YouTube. If you are listening, please give us a five star if this was much more enjoyable than your last Uber ride, and I bet it was. Um, I will see you in the next one. <laughs> there we go. Yay! Yay!